people think that because you're a scientist that you've got the quantitative skills. You really don't. Biology is more an art than a quant. Um, and so I was not prepared uh, as some of my colleagues were. I wasn't at the same place, I guess. Um, and I must say, I surprised myself, I guess, in, in being able to, to handle the coursework. And it's not to say that it's not challenging, because clearly this is, this is Wharton. So it was definitely a challenge, but that's what I came here for. And while it was challenging, it was definitely doable. And you do have the support of, of not only the professors who are more than willing to talk to you at you know 9 o'clock on a Thursday night to help you through things, but also your classmates who it's a very collaborative environment. So um, it's it's not. It was surprisingly that's one of the take homes as well. It wasn't as competitive as I thought it was going to be. It was much more collaborative. So when I needed help on my, or still need help on my advanced corporate finance exam, which is coming up next weekend, I, I'm my classmates are more than willing to step in and, and help me out. I had a, a quantitative background, but before arriving at Wharton, I'd never taken an economics class. I'd never taken an accounting class. I'd never taken a statistics class. So there were, there were plenty of things that were intimidating to me about the program. And, and it's funny because everybody focuses so much on the quantitative side. What if I'm not good at calculus? What if I wasn't a math person? Um, I don't care who you are. You're going to be challenged and off your equilibrium on some topic at this program. So nobody should get too cocky about feeling like they're going to come in having everything sure. mastered. Um, so. No quantitative background. Um, and I think that uh, clearly your study group or my study group was, was critical. We would meet every Tuesday night at uh, the, uh, one of the partners at Cooper and Lyburn office at the time. And boy, I rarely missed a Tuesday if we knew we had an accounting class coming up. Um, so a lot of support from, uh, from peers. Um, but I think just a quick story about diversity and how important that is when you sit in the chair and you think, what's my contribution going to be? And if I have a financial background or if I don't, I remember um, being somewhat intimidating the, the, the first day of, of class and sitting back in the room and the professor of microeconomics sat up at the head of the class and he said, so look around you. And he said, every one of you that's in this room is one of three types of people. And he says, it's your job to figure out A, who you are, and B, surround you with the other two. Mm -hmm. And he said, A, there are gearheads, the smart engineers, the analytical type, B, there are um, bean counters, and there are your financial folks, there are your analytics, um, and your accountants, and C, there are poets, and that's everybody else. That's the arts, that's the marketing, that's the everybody else. And so what it taught me was, not only did I have a lot to learn from the two types that I wasn't, B, to surround myself with them, but C, that you do have a contribution to make. And so, you know, you're here, A, to learn, but B, you know, one of the great takeaways at the end is you will also make a significant contribution to your peers. So I am also a poet, and at the risk of a lengthy <laughs> answer, I, I just want to share a story about uh, pre-admission. So I met with Diane um, uh, about getting into the program, and I did not do well on my GMATs. And so I said, Diane, what do I do? How do I, how do I get in? Because I want to be here. And she gave me very specific advice. Get your GMAT score up, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> And so I did, two, I did two things, right? One is I, I, I worked really hard on, on doing well on that test. But two is I, I actually partnered with somebody in my organization in finance to tutor me, uh, not in GMAT, but in actually what is finance? What is corporate finance? How does it work? And so when I came back, it was actually probably more my interview than my GMAT score, which improved but not dramatically, um, to be able to say, look, I, I have this level of commitment and, and uh, I've found this type of person to help me. Um, the other thing that got me through the program, now that I've uh, admitted my GMAT scores, is the gentleman in the back, Brian Egress, is one of my classmates, one of my uh, group members. And in my group, there were uh, Brian, who's a math magician, uh, as well as an, a, a forensic accountant, uh, two engineers, um, and me, a marketing guy. And so uh, I was able to really tap into those resources to help me get through the harder times of the quant. So there's something for everybody. Um, I remember my first two exams at Warden. After staying up, you know, the night before till four in the morning studying, I had back to back a law exam, and then right after that a microeconomics exam. And in the law exam, the big blue book question, which I went on for at least two blue books on, was you know discuss the evolving. I still remember this. Cause essentially, I said discuss the evolving nature of product liability in uh, in society and in law. 
you know, so I went on for two books, two books about that. And I happen to be an accountant, but I fancy myself more of a poet. So I did really, <laughs> really well at that. Um, and then I went into microeconomics, and, went, and by that time I'm exhausted. And uh, one of the last questions is solving a quadratic equation. So equations don't speak to me. Uh, and I don't speak to them either. Um, <laughs> so it was solve a quadratic equation that had uh, a negative fractional exponent with a variable in the exponent. And for some of you, you may be going, yeah, no, piece of cake. I mean, I, for me, I, 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 went, I must have spent an hour on that, and I had no clue as to how to solve it except just keep plugging in different numbers and see if it came out. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't do so well at that. So there is something, there is something for everybody here, something that, something that will make you uh, passionate and proud of what you are and something to completely throw you off your game. I left that one blank, and look, I made it through it. <laughs>